For my college winter break, I decided I was gonna spend all six weeks in the Florida Keys. Now being there for such a long time, obviously wasn't gonna be free, so I had to get a job. After working one day at a local restaurant, it quickly became evident that my time would much better be spent on the water. So I threw up a Facebook post on the Florida Keys fishing group and had a bunch of responses in just a couple hours. I spent two days pulling 400 lobster traps as Captain Phil Cape wrapped up his final lobster season in the Gulf. But for editing simplicity, I decided to combine both days into one project. Now this is a livelihood for the guys down here, plus I was on the clock, so I didn't want the camera to get in the way of working. But I did try my best to, to subtly capture all the action of the operation that goes on the boat, and I'll try my best throughout the video to explain the whole operation. Now, before we jump in the video, you guys just do me a quick favor, hit the like and subscribe button down below. I really appreciate it. It really, really does help out the future of my channel. So stay tuned. Two days working on a commercial lobster boat in the Florida Keys. All right, let's get on the road. We got 45 minute drive south to the dock and then we uh, start lobstering. You. There we go. Well, today we're gonna become a commercial lobsterman. So shift starts at six o'clock. We're gonna be there about 5.50. We got our bibs, lobsterman's lunch, and uh, gonna be hard work, but I'm excited. Good morning. Just before the sun broke the horizon, me and the other crewmates, Garrett and Michael, boarded the boat, a completely rebuilt 1970s Gloria with Captain Phil at the helm. The captain, Phil Cape, was a great guy on par for his Canadian background. An ex-contractor in Montreal, Phil went to try a new venture and having a U.S. business was an easy way to get a year-round visa. Known and teased as the Canadian in the Keys, Phil worked several years as a commercial stone crab and lobster fisherman before moving on from the industry this year. It was a 20-mile ride out to the first line of traps, with calm seas on day one, but the chop on day two made for a rocky shift on the water. Each line is composed of roughly 100 traps, which are all pulled non-stop for the next couple hours. Not spraying it? Well, this one's okay. And then you just gotta hit the other side, that's it. 
as Garrett demoed. My job was the blaster, which meant I got to wield this extremely pressurized hose, blasting all the marine growth off the wooden lava track. Right for that? Yeah, and then just have to stick the rope inside. Even more importantly, I was in charge of the precious cargo, emptying the traps of any lobster bycatch and sorting the potentially keeper lobsters. After the traps were cleaned, I passed them to Michael, who was a stacker, in charge of stacking all 275 pound traps into 50 four trap high piles. Garrett's job was the puller, grabbing the buoys with a gaff and feeding the line through the hydraulic crank. This is the most dangerous job on board as a miscalculation on hydraulic control to send a 75 pound lobster trap hurtling towards it. Traps wouldn't always come in smoothly either, sometimes tangled with other pots in the line or ghost traps that have broken off in a storm or boat strike. This produced a dangerous mess. Ah, my finger. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh. I probably threw back more than half of what I emptied from the pots, including some interesting bycatch. Short lobster, no shark, mangrove. some stone crabs, and if they were big enough, I put them in the bin and Michael measured their claws to see if we could recreationally take them home for dinner. Oh yeah. Plus plenty of different tropical fish species. Little uh, gag in here, I think. Goliath? Yeah, check him out. This little guy. even some Weasley nurse sharks. But most of the bycatch were just short lobsters, which were returned safely to the water. trap was hit or miss. Some traps would be completely empty. First trap got a bunch. Other yeah, traps were overflowing with lobsters. Big one. 
Go five, a couple good ones. Oh yeah. There's a good one. Between pulling the first and last line, we got a much needed 20 minute break as we commuted to the next string of 100. After pulling, blasting, and stacking traps for eight hours, we settled up for a slow moving chug back to the dock. Even this part of the day was sketchy as traversing the Florida Keys flats with 15,000 pounds of lobster traps brought us in just inches of water between the hole and coral bottom. After soaking in salt water and gunk for hours on end, it was nice to finally dry off and take in the beauty of the Keys. After our two hour crawl back, we pulled into the buyer's dock and unloaded our day's catch. <coughs> Nothing better than yesterday. Right. Say 190. Well, it looked like more. Yeah. Earlier when it was water. Near the buyers further sorted our harvest between larger keepers, smaller keepers, and any lobster they deemed weak or unfit for the market. I even got to take home some of these rejects on my last day and they were delicious. After unloading our lobsters, it was time to unload all 400 traps, 200 each day, back at the dock where they would stink until they eventually dried in the summer months. Bonus. Garrett, see you, bro. Yes, sir. I'm good. See you, Michael. Yo, um, kingfish and like any other thing you got going on. If you need a hand, let me know. All right, appreciate it. I'll see you guys around. All right, Patrick. See ya. All right, thanks a lot, thanks. man. Thanks, see ya. All right, day one of working on a commercial lobster boat. Each day costs about $1,400 in operating expenses between bait, fuel, crew, and licensing. Now, just by basic math, at 90 pounds on day one and 150 pounds on day two, 
at a market price of $8 a pound, the whole operation barely broke even. Now, granted, this wasn't at the peak of the season. This is at the end of the Gulf season when the lobsters are migrating from the Gulf to the Atlantic side and the traps did have to come back anyway. Phil Hand makes his own lobster traps in the summer, which are worth about $35. Add on a $200 tag fee across 440 traps and you're looking at over $100,000 in just the traps alone. If you add up everything all together, this is at a minimum a million dollar operation and Phil had one of the smallest operations in the Keys. Other captains have thousands of traps and fish both the Gulf and Atlantic seasons. Overhead alone can chop up half of your entire income. As I briefly mentioned before, this was Phil's last commercial lobster season and he told me the future of the industry isn't bright. There's very minimal reliable labor willing to put in the hard work on these boats, which is probably why I got a job so easily. Rising fuel prices and increased regulation further bring more dollars out of commercial lobstermen's pockets. Plus decreasing lobster harvest and reliance on China as the main buyer really increased the unpredictability of the profitability of this entire industry. Personally, I had a great experience in my two days as a lobsterman. It was definitely the hardest job I ever worked, but besides a couple cuts and bumps, I left the boat with a hands-on education of the commercial spiny lobster industry in the Florida Keys. I want to thank Gary for referring me to the job and Captain Phil for being the best Canadian captain I could find in the Keys. This is definitely a different video from the relaxed fishing I normally do, but hopefully you guys enjoyed and never on the send.